Welcome to a space game devlog number 15. My buddy Rich and I, along with some community contributors, have been working on this space game since January of this year. We've been making crazy progress on it, having a lot of fun, and today I've got a bunch of really cool new features I want to talk about. Now, the first thing that we've been testing and refining a bit, still a lot more work to do, is missile meta and SeaWiz meta. When you're approaching a target that has fired missiles at you, you will have less time to shoot shoot down those missiles, for example. Now, what if we are neither running away or approaching the target? What's gonna happen with the Seawiz? Well, they have a bit more time to engage. The missiles still get pretty close to us, but we've managed to shoot them all down. And as I'm sure you figured out, if I'm moving away from the missiles, I'll now have a lot more time to engage them. And the faster ships will have a lot more flexibility in terms of engaging missiles, dodging missiles. That will be one of their main defenses is their speed. Now we've got quite a bit more work to do on refining the missile and SeaWiz stuff. It is one of the more complex systems in the game, but a fun challenge nonetheless. There's a ton of stuff I want to get into this week, but I want to first give a huge shout out to Scraler for basically turning our Discord into an acceptable place to discuss the game. He completely revamped the entire Discord making new channels, setting up bots, creating themed uh, channel ideas, moderating like crazy. Just done a fantastic job. We even have a new credit section now showing all the people who collaborated with the game and what they've actually added to the game. That helps me keep track of it and anybody who's interested in the project can see who's been working on it and what they've done. So that's been just really exciting and I'm excited about our Discord channel, which you should join if you're interested in following the game or even contributing in some discussion ideas and stuff like that. Now, one of the things that I enjoyed working on the most this last week were brand new asteroids. We're basically replacing all of the Space Creator Pro asteroids that I got in an Unreal Engine asset bundle. Uh, with our own custom asteroids. This will let us control the performance of them a little bit more with making our own materials. We can modify them easier. We can add new ones, create big ones for space stations. Huge shout out to John Lagostini. I'll link him in the video description. He is a Unreal Engine expert, technical artist. He's working on his own stuff right now, but he built out a workflow for me to follow to create asteroids. This went from poly modeling and sculpting it in Blender to properly making low res and high res versions of the mesh, exporting it properly to Adobe Substance Painter, and then throwing in a custom material shader that he built out for the asteroid in Substance Painter, baking that all out and exporting it into the Unreal Engine and setting up the material in the Unreal Engine. He did a ton to get that working for us, and now I just feel like I have all this control, and I'm really excited to start building more bespoke asteroid space stations down the road where the asteroids can kind of conform to the design of the station that I want to make. Really excited about that. Hopefully we can get there next week, but we'll see what we got time for. Now, last week I was actually on vacation, so I had to kind of pre-record a devlog about the overarching theme for the game, but Rich did not take the week off and he made a ton of progress on our radar overlay. So basically we've only been able to show enemy ships in our friendly ships on the radar overlay, but now we can see all the bullets and projectiles and stuff flying around. And this gives us a huge amount of information as to who's shooting at what, where the bullets are, how far away they are. Um, you can see the SeaWiz ammo flying out from the ship and going after missiles. You can see rail guns flying through space and hitting a ship five kilometers away. You can see the missiles traveling, how many of them there are, uh, how many volleys and waves of them. This is going to be hugely important for the player to be able to see what kind of threats they're up against and what's incoming before it actually enters the realm of their screen. He also made some really nice updates to our PIP, the picture-in-picture -picture target that when you select another spaceship, you now get some data readouts about it. It's got a name, it's got a class, it's got a level, it's got... Um, a health bar that actually gets lower as you deal damage to it. We've got the distance on there, which was on there before. Um, and he also added in some UI sound effects. Some of these are probably a little bit placeholder. We're kind of adding in some of the UI info that's going to be important to the game. So it's just nice to be able to see all that stuff, especially the health of an enemy ship. 
And in addition to the pip sound effects, we now have a cargo ingest sort of placeholder sound effect when you scoop up cargo. Panzer V1 has been making some new sound effects for us. We've got a little missile tube plunk launch sound. And some VFX that are supposed to go along with it, but all my VFX are turning black right now. Just driving me crazy trying to figure that one out. But Panzer V1 also built out a really nice set of sounds for our airlock. We have a dynamic airlock now that extends, retracts, and attaches. Uh, Rich built out basically a new docking system for us. It's still work in progress and a little rough around the edges, but it's a great starting place for a huge component of the game. And Rich is actually going to get into the details of how he built this and made it work. It's fairly complex. So as we get further along in the project, I'm going to be doing a lot more behind the scenes coding, some uh, less interesting stuff, but it's good to take a little break from that stuff every once in a while to do something more fun as a little treat. So this week that treat was working on starting to get docking working. Docking will involve basically two airlocks connecting to each other. It could be a ship and a space station or two ships. So I'll talk a little bit about how the airlock is implemented. Currently, the airlock has just three states that it could be in. It could be in a standby state, which means it's closed, but it's still ready to start docking with anything. It could be in the aligning state, which means it's close to another airlock and it's starting to get ready to connect to it. And finally, it can be in the docked state, which means it is currently connected to another airlock. There's also going to be transitions between these states. So when it's in standby and it starts aligning, we're going to extend the docking collar and start showing the UI for alignment. So because of these states and these transitions, I thought it was a good fit for a very common pattern in game development called FSM or finite state machine. That really just means that something can be in one of multiple states, but it can't be in more than one state at a time and also that there's transitions between those states. The setup for this is pretty simple. Here in my C++, I've just got an enumeration with three options, standby, aligning, or docked. The airlock can only ever be in one of these states. Then the other big part of the FSM is a way to transition from one state to another. Then I've got some helper functions here, which basically represent the most common transitions we're going to make. Over here in our blueprint, we've got some very basic implementations of these transition methods. Tell it to start aligning, then it transitions to the aligning state. And then it does some animation and sound stuff. Likewise, to cancel aligning, like let's say you change your mind, back off, or you're just flying by another airlock quickly, we will transition back to standby and then if there's any animation or sound needed, like maybe the collar is halfway extended, we need to pull it back, we'll do that. And besides those transition functions, we might have other functions that just depend on that state to know how to branch. Say we call this function and the airlock is in standby mode, then we know that we need to retract the docking collar. Or if we're in the aligning state, then we need to extend the docking collar. And this is all just sound and animation. Another example of a function that depends on the state and does different things based on the state. This just looks to see, are we near another airlock and are we facing it? If we're in standby mode and there's another airlock nearby and we're facing it, then start the alignment process. Or if we're in the alignment process and we're no longer near another airlock or we're not facing the airlock anymore, then cancel the process. If we're already docked, we don't need to worry about this particular function. Now, while this code is laid out somewhat pleasantly, it's still not super easy to grasp at a quick glance. So I could extend this out and make it more easy to read. I could break it into smaller functions. Uh, but for now, what I'm gonna do is just say, I think this will be easier to parse and understand when I or another developer are looking at this in C++. Likewise, there may be a little bit of a performance benefit to moving it to C++, so that's what I'm gonna do. Rich has also spent quite a bit of time over the past few weeks refactoring basically how we build out our spaceships in the game. Uh, this is all back-end stuff where it has to do with how things are built and organized and labeled and all that stuff. 
And it's really important to kind of optimizing how we build the game and making things easy and efficient down the road. Uh, but it is a lot of in-depth backend graphs and coding and all that fun stuff. Most of which I don't really understand, and he didn't think it'd be that entertaining to talk about. But I just wanted to give him credit where credit is due, because there's a lot of extra behind-the-scenes stuff going on. Now, in terms of where we are in production and what our next main goal is, we're moving towards sort of a movement and combat uh, demonstration of the game. Basically, we've written out a, a level design, all the components that we need to make that level work. We're shooting for that, and hopefully we're not too far away. In fact, next week I'm going to start building out that level more specifically and once that level is built out we will see what kind of rough spots of it it has when it comes to our ship movement weapons enemy ai all that stuff but we're getting pretty close to not what i would call a vertical slice but a nice little demonstration of some of the more key components of the game hopefully working and so uh, that's pretty exciting. I don't know how far away we are. Maybe a month, maybe three weeks, maybe a little over. I'm not really sure, but uh, I will keep you guys posted on that. That is what we're working towards, and it has been a really exciting journey. Once again, if you guys want to follow the game in a bit more detail and join our Discord discussions, check the link in the video description for our Discord. It's a lot of fun over there. And if you want to watch some more of the devlogs, the last one was really great in which I talked about the overall design and scope of the game. So you can click on that guy right here and check that one out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe for more content, like it, ding the notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.